So first of all, I'm thrilled, pleased as punch to be here with y'all. This is one of my favorite things to do, and I love that it's free online training for different areas of the world that are people that wouldn't otherwise have access to it. So it's a real feel-good thing for me to be here, so thank you for that. So Photoshop CS6, new features intensive, here we go. Uh, I chose this picture because everybody is excited and they're jumping, and that's how I feel about Photoshop CS6. It's one of the most feature-packed releases that I've seen in years. Okay, it's really quite amazing. Um, I got to review it for Macworld Magazine recently, and in my review I said that software releases, software updates come and go, but this release of Photoshop CS6 really makes you sit up and take notice. There's so many really great features in here that save us a lot of time, things that used to be difficult to do are no longer near as difficult to do, and improving the productivity of photographers and graphic designers alike. There's also a slew of upgrades and new features in this release that have been on on customers' wish list for years. For example, the ability to duplicate multiple layers at the same time with a keyboard shortcut. So we're gonna go over all of those new features. And like Kenna said, even if you haven't upgraded to CS6, or you may not be planning to right away, you're still gonna learn a slew of wonderfully non-destructive editing techniques and just good practices for your Photoshop life. But before we dive into that, I want to talk about just a couple other things real quick. If you guys want to connect with me, I would absolutely love it. I'm a very social person. <laughs> My website is photolisa.com. That is Lisa with an E, which to me is a logical way to spell it. Lisa. See, it's not Lisa. <laughs> uh, you can also fire me an email, uh, lisa at photolisa.com. And I'd love for you to connect with me on Twitter. My handle is photolisa. You notice a theme here. <laughs> and if if you happen to click the like button on my Facebook page, you can download some free goodies. I've got two page cheat sheets for Photoshop. I've got a two page cheat sheet for Elements, if there's any Elements users out there in the great interwebs. And also a two page cheat sheet on iPhoto, because I also wrote an iPhoto book. So those are completely free, just click the like button and you can download those. And speaking of books, I've got a wonderful book discount for you here. Um, on the iPhoto 11 book, Photoshop CS5 and Photoshop CS6. So like we were saying earlier, I'm really proud that the book is out now. We worked really hard to get it out as soon as the software shipped and it is shipping now. And we're gonna have them delivered live in class tomorrow and I haven't even seen them. <laughs> so this will be really exciting for me. <laughs> If you want to purchase it over on O'Reilly's site, you can do that. If you enter the code AUTHD, A -U -T -H -D, you will get a discount. But to be honest, the price on Amazon right now is incredible. So if you want to trot on over to Amazon to pick it up, you can do that. And I've got a special link for you that Ken will share in the chat room. It's lisa.in. And we've got a, a little acronym that I made up here, PSCS6MM. So it stands for Photoshop CS6 Missing Manual. So you can pick that up over there. Also, I'm proud to say that the majority, if not all, the images that we're going to be using in this three-day intensive extravaganza are provided by iStockPhoto.com, the world's most fabulous resource for royalty-free imagery. And photographers always ask me, well, why the heck would I need stock imagery because I'm a photographer and I take my own pictures? Well, that's all well and fine. But let's say that you took a, a photo shoot of a wedding and you wanted to make a creative collage, say so you want to blend the happy couple in with some roses. You might not have that bed of roses shot. So that's a good opportunity to purchase stock imagery. And if a bed of roses isn't appropriate, you can still find everything you need <laughs> on iStock Photo. It's okay to laugh in studio. <laughs> And iStock is in kind enough to give all the students of Creative Live a special discount. You can go to the URL iStockphoto.com slash creativelive.php and you will receive a 20% off discount on your first credit purchase. So that's a good deal. And feel free to pass that deal along. The more people take advantage of that, the better. All right. Let's talk about Photoshop now. So I wanted to start out and talk a little bit about pricing and this newfangled thing called the Creative Cloud that everybody's trying to figure out what the heck it is. So here's a little chart that gives you an idea of the pricing. 
All of the upgrades that I mentioned are only good if you're coming from CS3. Unfortunately, the upgrades are not good for CS2, CS1, or anything like that. So you have to at least have CS3 to upgrade. If you purchase just Photoshop, it's 200 bucks, okay, per user. Okay, and Adobe has promised or threatened <laughs> that they're going to be updating their software every year. So if the price, if the prices stay about the same, so you're looking at $200 per person per year, okay, for just Photoshop. If you buy the full version, it's about $700. And the Creative Cloud is another option now, and it includes nearly all of the Adobe applications. So we're talking about... Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, uh, Media Encoder, uh, gosh, Fireworks, Dreamweaver, Acrobat, literally everything that they make, except for the iPad Touch apps. Okay, so those are not included in the Creative Cloud. So what this means is, if you haven't bought any of this software, you haven't upgraded in a while, you can literally spend $30 a month per user for a year and you do have to sign a one-year contract and you will get access to all of that software. Okay, so if you've not bought into these things before, that might be a good deal for you, okay? Uh, that price is only good for one year. After one year is up, it's gonna go to $50 per user. And I believe, yeah, for year two, and you still have to sign, you know, the year contract. If you don't want to sign a yearly contract, then you can get the Creative Cloud apps for $80 per user per month. Okay, and that's with no contract. So in comparison, you can look at, okay, well, if I get all those apps with a Creative Cloud, you used to get all those apps with the Master Suite. You still do, except for there's two missing. Adobe tucked in two new applications into the Creative Cloud called Adobe Muse and Adobe Edge. And Edge is their animation software. It's rooted in HTML5. They're kind of getting away from Flash a little bit, <laughs> going to HTML5. So that's their new animation editor. Uh, the other new program is called Muse, and that's simply a WYSIWYG HTML editor. So it lets graphic designers build websites without actually having to know any code, thank Thor. <laughs> so those two applications are included with the cloud. They are not included in the master suite, okay? So master suite, if you're upgrading, is 525 bucks. Full price is $2,600, and that, like I said, includes everything except for Muse and Edge. So it just depends on if you're going to use those other pieces of software, if you should get cloud or if you should just upgrade you know, your individual copies. Adobe does bundle the software together in a couple of um, slightly discounted packages. The production premium and design and web premium are $375 for an upgrade or $1,900 for a full, uh, full price. And those include most everything except for Muse and Edge and that kind of thing. The design, uh, the production premium doesn't include Dreamweaver, I don't believe, and the design and web premium does. So you'd have to look at those packages online to see what exactly they include. But the big thing here, <clears throat> and I should mention that the cloud also includes uh, 20 gigabytes of storage. So uh, Adobe is using it as kind of a sync thing, so you can sync your images and your files and that kind of thing, have, a, have it like a backup. Uh, resource there. So 20 gigs of storage and hosting for up to five websites are, is also included in that cloud. Now I did a little bit of math, which is a little bit scary, <laughs> but I had a calculator so it was okay. <laughs> so I figured out that if you're used to buying the master suite and you don't use Muse and Edge or you won't use Muse and Edge, then you're going to pay $75 more per user per year just for the benefit of having those other programs around in case you want to use them. So you really do need to think about which programs are you going to use. I wouldn't just buy into the cloud just because it's a new thing because you're going to have a bunch of software that you may or may not use. That being said, it's a great opportunity to uh, inspire you to play around with some of that software if it's sitting there for the taking, whereas you might not otherwise ever expose yourself to it. So if you're the playful and experimental type and you've got the money, you might want to spring for the cloud just to have access to all those other interesting applications. Question. Yeah, we have a couple of questions for, I don't know if you'll know the answers, but might as well ask them. Um, Stevehamill.com is wondering if you know if you can purchase Muse separately? I do not know that. Okay. But I can find out during the break. Cool. 
And Elisa C uh, is asking, is Edge also an HTML editor? No, Edge is for animation. Cool. But it's, it's building animation in HTML5, so. Cool. But it is specifically for animation. And Claire of RA, do you know if you'll be able to upgrade Photoshop in subsequent versions of if they're switching it to all subscription come CS7? I haven't, that's a good question. I haven't heard that they're going to do away with the standalone uh, upgrades quite yet. I hope they don't. You know, they're certainly, you know, they're, they're trying to encourage people to use the Creative Cloud, and I think that's what that whole Muse and Edge, you know, oh, look over here, bright and shiny, buy this thing. <laughs> but you really do need to ask yourself if you're going to use, you know, those other, those other applications, especially in today's economy, you know. It, it is a little bit more expensive, you know, so if you're not going to use that other stuff, you might want to just stick with the, with the regular versions. Okay. All and right, then, so that's um, a little bit about pricing. So think about it, do some math, and figure out if it works well for you or not.